welcome to a very special half hour cooking show of Cooking with Scott. Throughout the year he's whipped up many recipes and tonight we'll be sharing with you a few special ones including one that has never actually been on Lifestyle before so keep an eye out for that. Tonight we're serving up chicken liver pate, prawns and pizza. <music> Hi and welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to make chicken liver pate, so we're going to get straight into it because I've had to make a bit of a start on the recipe this morning. So what we have here is our fry pan full of diced onions, two cloves of garlic and some fat bacon. So fatty bacon that's going to add to the flavour of our dish. So they've been frying off there quite happily uh, for probably a good five minutes. To that we're going to add our spices and we've got mixed spice and dried turmeric going and then we're going to add our chicken livers. This is 500 grams of chicken livers. So if you're wanting to purchase chicken livers you need to let your butcher know um, probably a couple of days in advance so they can actually get them for you. They're not readily available on the shelves. So they go into the fry pan and they're going to fry off nicely. I'm just going to leave that there doing its, its thing because it'll take a few minutes to come up to, to heat. So the reason we're doing um, chicken liver pate or chicken liver tureen as some people call it is again from my recent trip away a lot of restaurants were serving foie gras. Now for those that don't know what foie gras is, it's been in the media a wee bit recently, foie gras is the actual goose livers and the geese are actually farmed just for their livers. They're fed on wonderful food to fatten them up, which fattens their livers. So basically, um, a lot of people think that's quite cruel. Um, some countries have actually banned um, the actual production of foie gras, or fattening of the geese, but some countries still have it. Uh, I was lucky enough in about three of the restaurants I went to to actually have foie gras. Uh, one of the restaurants, it was served as a wonderful slice, um, pan seared, and then basically um, served on some fresh cherries. Um, in Dubai I also had it um, just served like a burger, so a wonderful slice of foie gras in between a couple of burger buns. Um, so again quite interesting sort of combinations. So of course we don't necessarily get foie gras here, you can buy it um, in a tin form um, and then the next step down would be maybe to use duck livers. So of course if you keep the duck livers after duck shooting you could use duck livers and then we come down to the, what we're dealing with today is our chicken um, livers. So these start to fry off nicely. We don't want to actually overcook the livers either, just like if you're making your lamb's fry and bacon. For those that love lamb's fry and bacon, you want to undercook the, 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 the liver, in this case the, the chicken livers, because you still want a wee bit of pinkness there. So we're working on a high heat, cooking those livers. And because it is an offal, you want to make sure that they are reasonably well cooked, but not overcooked. Now in the recipe which you can get from QTV, I've talked about um, flaming it with some brandy. Now I don't happen to have any brandy around so I'm using some Perno. All we're doing is basically putting some alcohol into it, setting it on fire, we're burning off the alcohol but concentrating the flavour into it. So brandy is the classic, um, but as I said I'm just going to use some Perno today. So what you do is when you think your livers are starting to, to get cooked off, basically you just want to cut into it with your spoon or whatever you're stirring and just check inside to make sure that they're actually um, still a wee bit pink but not, not overcooked and becoming dry. So they're about the stage I want them. So what we can do now, if you're using a gas um, hob, you'd be really good for flambeing because you can just tilt your pan onto your gas flame and the pan will actually um, come to the heat. In my case I'm just going to pour some perno into the side and then it's going to heat up and we're just going to, to use the little lighter and there we get a wee bit of flames going, it's burning off the alcohol and then we're actually getting the flavour going into our pate. So stir that around to incorporate that alcohol. Just check the last few to make sure we're at the right stage. Then we're going to transfer this to our food processor. So basically this quantity will fit in a reasonably good size processor. You want all those juices as well because the fat and the bacon that we use to actually fry that off is going to help set our pate.
We want to process this so it's nice and smooth. Now, if you want a really smooth, smooth pate, what you can do is take it from here and part it, pass it through a sieve, and that will get rid of any of the sinew off the livers or anything that was left behind. Uh, but if you don't mind it a wee bit rustic, then food processor does the trick. Once it's a wee bit of process, we're going to add about 100 mils of cream. And what the cream's doing is it's making it even richer. It's going to help the setting as well a wee bit and also makes our pate a wee bit lighter in colour. So basically I'm hoping the camera can get a shot of that. Here's our pate. It doesn't look appetising as it is. Um, but that's the texture that we've actually got it to. So what you can do with it now is actually put it into a little dish or a loaf tin and you want to set it in the, in the fridge. So what I've done, I've set this in a little individual moulds and we've got some nice Melbourne toast. Now Melbourne toast is generally toast that has the crust taken off and is dried out in the oven just by itself. No addition of butter or oil or anything like that. Uh, I've just used today some ciabatta and left the crusts on and just dried it out in the oven so it's still nice and crunchy on the outside but still soft in the middle. And I'm serving the pate today with some of Maggie Bear's um, plum, basically, jelly. So this is a nice product from the, um, near the Barossa Valley in uh, Australia. It goes really nice with the pate. And so basically I'm going, to, I'm going to cut it so you can see this pate. So there you can hopefully see, still nice and pink inside. So on the toast with a wee bit of the wonderful plum jelly and you've got a nice starter, a nice little entree, spread it on crackers when you have friends come around. Keep in the fridge for probably around about three or four days maximum, um, but it won't last that long because I'm sure you'll eat it all up. So there's my chicken liver pate with plum jelly and Melbourne toast. Enjoy that one and I'll see you next time.